Guys, I think the award for the hardest to pronounce YouTuber name has got to go to Seth Zintach. Zintach? Seth Zintach? Anyway, guys, it's Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber, and today we are checking out the video that you, the channel members, have voted on. This is Seth Zintach's Caves of Cud. Let's get into it. Hey people, Seth here. Have you ever dug too deep and found something they don't want you to know? Sandy Loam, who is she and why can't I reach her? Mmm, okay, is that a civil engineering joke? Whew, whew. We all know civil engineering. Water plus dirt equal mud. Uh, that's it. Congratulations on completing your civil engineering degree. Have you ever fallen out with someone and restored your friendship using quantum entanglement to retroactively rewrite history and save them from a car crash that never actually happened have you ever won that's I, I love when lay people try to explain i mean really any concept that they don't fully understand right but quantum mechanics is maybe the most abused right and i'm not like a quantum genius i took one course in undergrad that sort of addressed quantum mechanics and a lot of the things that people attribute to quantum mechanics like changing outcomes through time and space is is like a misunderstanding of a thought experiment trying to prove why quantum mechanics doesn't actually work I wanted to skip a lifetime of formal education just by cooking a banana and finally have you ever had a fungal infection on your arm that despite your best efforts won't go away no problem just cut it off mm, whoa okay this is a real game all right you sure you want to dismember yourself Okay, this is, a, this is a game mechanic we all are here for. Um, by the way, okay, treatment-resistant fungal infections are actually a huge problem in um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and mixed martial arts, right? The reason, if you didn't know this, similar to wrestling and Judo, is that you have a bunch of people who live regular day-to-day -day lives out in the wide world. Then they come to an enclosed gym, they sweat, the humidity level rises, the temperature level rises, and they all hang out on these mats, which are spongy, i.e. they have lots of little, little squishy pockets. And so the result is that bacteria, it is like the ultimate Petri dish. And so what you end up with is a lot of fungal infections that basically, I'm going to say, are not that common. Right? The, the, the most common of these fungal infections is what's called ringworm. Uh, this can be also known as athlete foot or jock itch, right? Um, but because only, only wrestlers, MMA fighters, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu players, etc., they're the only ones that will ever get like a jock itch or, you know, toe toe fungus or whatever on like their arm right because every other one of those places is naturally like kind of kind of like damp and enclosed right you work out you sweat that's sort of where sweats get stuck um and so yeah it, but when you have so many people and they're all treating it with over-the-counter lamisil uh sometimes right it just takes one lazy person to do a half-assed job and boom now you've got ringworm that is treatment resistant and you got to go to your dermatologist then stab a syringe filled with anabolic growth hormones right into your chest and grow a new one as you well know mushrooms are a great source of protein i just hope you're not picky about the origin of that protein everything said could be described as the raving of a paranoid schizophrenic but it isn't it's an mm, i appreciate him including uh time cube i think that's what that screenshot was uh if you want a fascinating look into one of the early internet's most bizarre figures you want to look at it i think it's atrocity guide who has this documentary on the man who invented time cube and this is someone who is either like so stupid that they don't realize they're stupid and think they're a genius um or maybe someone who's mentally ill it's not super clear um but the inventor of time cube was like pretty functional day to day but really thought he had come up with an entirely new system of uh like mathematics uh which i think is sort of like there's a celebrity who thinks that two plus two equals like like three or something um 
And yet he maintains this is true, despite the fact that it's like verifiably false. Everyday occurrence in the Caves of Quud, which I'm not sure how to say. So we'll just use the acronym instead. Cock is like the negligent supervisor. Mm, how, how late are we? Oh, we're five minutes into the video. Oh, God. we're going to be fine. YouTube's not going to demonetize me unless I apparently, um, you know, start pulling out my rifles to a kindergarten daycare when the kids ask him if they can collectively mutilate themselves in the sandbox he doesn't say no don't do that he says give it a try see damn the bane child See what happens. Caves of Quad is an open-ended, sandbox roguelike which is still in development. Despite this, it's entirely playable and extremely fun. Fun, which I define as I spent half a day with my screen looking like this, and I had to kill a man for his tattoo gun so I could drink the ink, pull the cord on a flashbang, and explode it into my open eyes. Why? Because in this game, that's how you cure monochromia. If Monochromia? You mean colorblindness? Uh, ooh, man, I have color blindness. I mean, I'm not, I don't think it's monochromia, but it's something else. And, uh, whew, deleting your eyes and replacing them. I mean, I guess it's like, it makes sense if you're on a lot of LSD, right? Because it's like, yeah, real color blindness, for those of you that don't know, you have street racers, you have these cones in your eyes, right? And the cones detect different wavelengths of color. So a, uh, you know, famous artist, right, may actually have really sensitive, they may even, I think, have more cones than the regular person. So they can subtly distinguish colors that we can't. But there's a default number of cones that a human has. However, in a couple of us mutants, uh, I say that lovingly as a colorblind person those cones are sort of like fused together either entirely or just like partially and the result is that when we see in my case blue and purple they just sort of stimulate the same little chunky cone group and the result is that uh, they all sort of look the same to my brain right uh now you're wondering why did the army let you in and to that i respond because it was 2006 and the army would take any human being with a pulse so got them Pain and suffering are the ex So anyway, all that to say, right, it logically, if you can't see some colors, then a flashbang, which produces bright white light, right, all of the colors of the spectrum sort of blasting you in the face, uh, sure, that could maybe s pull apart those cones in your eyes. Why not? Extra edge to your enjoyment, you're gonna have a great time. If you're asking yourself right now, Seth, what the fuck am I looking at? It might not be your cup of tea, but I don't drink tea because they tampered my water supply and ever since I started drinking from a public tap, I've been getting more and more of these androgynous body pillows. Let's be real here. Did he just have, like, Castillo de Diablo wine next to his anime cat girl? I need something stronger than coffee for this video. Also, gentlemen, um, if you know, you may notice that I am, uh, as I pause the video, actually like removing it from the screen. Um, this is this is just sort of an effort to um, not be to be less like the terrible React channels that just play the video while they go, oh, ooh. Uh, right and more like the good react channels that actually just like only show the video while it's being played so if you find this format to be about neutral let me know in the comments but if it really annoys you definitely let me know caves of could caves of could cock is not the prettiest of games this is probably the only game you could get caught playing in the office and have your boss look at the screen and think damn my man's Excel spreadsheet looks fucked up. It's not a very visual game. Even though there are some nice visuals here and there. You're gonna have to use imagination. Ah, uh, uh, Imagination. No, I shut that I shut that down. Imagining a better world? No. No 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 no. No. You you will eat the bugs. And if you can't, take my word for it that this random collection of pixels is actually a small farming community. So, what's the story of Quud? I don't know. There used to be an advanced transhumanist civilization living on Quud, but they're not around anymore. Instead, we got mutated everything, from humans to trees, from pigs to chimpanzees. Everything thinks, feels, and the plants talk behind your back. Welcome to Quud. Electrified metal folding chair.
Oh, it's a complete madhouse, but hey, it's very colorful. To play this stupid game, you need to make a character, for which you've got two options, mutant or true kin. What's the difference? Mutants are genetic freaks, and they randomly mutate their genome as they level up, which includes, but not limited to, multiple heads, multiple feet, multiple hands, two hearts, paralyzing stingers, regrowing limbs, the ability to fly, the ability to induce a brain aneurysm, spontaneous combustion Tell okay this is like this is like if the emperor th this is maybe like techno barbarian earth from 40k right you people have access to genetic engineering but god damn they have no clue how to use it and like only a godlike emperor of mankind could be like all right we're gonna take all this nonsense that's happening to humans genetic code and we're gonna like polish it down to something moderately more stable all right which is ironic of course Anytime you have, uh, I mean, anytime you have like this transhumanist uh, ideas in a sci-fi game or book or film or movie or universe, um, you always get this sort of weird uh, conflict, right? And it's especially true in 40K, right? The Emperor of Man is the defender of humanity. And humanity is, of course, defined by basically its genetic code. We're a species with a specific set of DNA. That's how we know one species from another uh, definitively and so for the emperor of mankind to go i'm going to protect human beings by creating non-human being human facsimiles is to me hilarious teleportation phasing through solid objects and even infinite nutrition from the sun because your skin is made of chlorophyll so what's the downside you're a horrific abomination and if you encounter a certain holy inquisition of turbo augmented race purists they'll kill you on sight Con <laughs> nice Firstly, true to the name, true kin are humans that haven't mutated. They don't get mutations. They get cybernetic augmentations. These don't come cheap. You first need to obtain an implant, whether by chance or by cutting the electronics out of a dead Templar. Then you need to find an autonomous upgrade terminal, which, upon detecting that you are indeed a pure-blooded human, refers to you as aristocrat and huh. allows you to install as many implants as you want, provided your body has space and provided you did not forget to upgrade upgrade your cybernetic software license because even if it were <laughs> okay that is one of my favorite dystopian possible outcomes is a world in which human beings have access to all sorts of crazy transhumanist technology but they are all controlled by for-profit corporations because if there's one thing that we have seen it's that corporations when are absolutely willing to charge you exorbitant prices when they have control over whether you live or die right you can see in the u.s our medical care system is entirely privatized and despite the fact that insulin costs like I'm going to say like 60 cents a dose to make, uh, we charge eight to $900. And that is because the market knows that if people don't get insulin, they die. So if you catch a diabetic who needs insulin to live, they will literally sign their life away to get it because their life is already signed away, right? This isn't a statement about like individual diabetics as people. I'm sure they all are different, but this is sort of how classical market economics explains it the utility of life-saving medication to a dying person is infinity because you will pay any price to receive that because the alternative is not being alive right all that to say that i love hate uh the dystopian looks uh films movies videos etc where that's exactly the case like you can you can have cybernetic super strength brought to you by amazon which you can buy the basic license which allows you to use your super strength up to 100 pounds of lifting up to three times a month but for 16.99 a month you get two additional bonus days of lift and for the premium package of 799 dollars a month you get max lift capacity on a daily basis but for an industrial license of three thousand nine hundred seventy dollars a month you can get access to the full lift capacity for 20 for 24 hours a day naturally if you are a mover you have to pay the giant three thousand dollar augmentation license right multiply that times every cybernetic enhancement right and you have this insane wild dystopia 
um, where everything is just sort of this like corporate licensing fee. World is over. We cannot forget the importance of arbitrary bureaucratic administration. And by God, you're going to follow strict HR protocol to get your transhumanist upgrades. Every registered cybernetic in your body runs a license cost. The total cannot exceed the license, which you have to upgrade using cybernetic credits. These are exceptionally rare, and there's no easy way of finding them. And rightly so, because cybernetics are absolutely ridiculous. Tired of your tiny, feminine hands? giant hands. Huh. Afraid of dying? Onboard intravenous AI controlled injectors designed to pump you full of life-saving chemicals depending on the situation instantaneously. Do you want to fabricate narcotics in the middle of combat? We can install fingers on top of your fingers. And if you ever change your mind, you can swap them out for something else. However, amputating your legs to replace them with a set of motorized tank treads is unfortunately an irreversible process. <laughs> I love how that is considered being a pure human, is being a tank tread wearing 1500 finger possessing cyber monster. Personally, I recommend you play a mutant when starting out. There's not really any bad choices in character creation, but realistically, don't get too attached to your first dozen. Once you're more confident, you can play Trukin instead and abuse the system so hard, you'll forget the original purpose of this game. Attributes uh -huh. are simple, combat is even simpler, which is convenient because fighting is of a main way to level up. You're going to be doing a lot of fighting, and death is an ever-present reality, especially at lower levels. If <laughs> Killed by a salt hopper? I just love how this is an endless pixelated montage of people fighting and dying in tiny, underutilized, like, like under-depicted uh, pixelation. If I'm going to be very honest with you, most of you will reach Red Rock for one of the early quests and get stoned to death by a pack of bloodthirsty baboons. My advice, get a gun. There's a lot of dangers out there, but bullets don't discriminate. They only penetrate. This game is all about risk management, and there's no telling what you're going to encounter because nearly everything is randomly generated and unique to your save file. The settlements, the cultures, the lore, the layouts of dungeons and that's pretty wild to have procedurally generated like lore and dwellings across the world and even the pharmacological treatment for different types of disease are built completely out of RNG. Amazingly, it actually works most of the time. The only things that stay the same are the location of unique settlements, the topography of the map, and of course, the main quest line. Caves of Quid is quite unique in this regard since most roguelikes don't have an overarching story. It's current. Sorry, what is a roguelike? I've heard that multiple times and I I don't actually know what it means. ...unfinished, so consider it entirely optional. If you're looking to follow an objective and possibly, probably, most likely, die in a process. If it makes you feel any better, most players get to Golgotha, and then they quit. In my case, I got to Golgotha, came back, and then I realized that wasn't the hard part. What did he mean by this? I'm Throat is sore, tongue is swollen. Salt dunes, you pass by some salt dunes. You pass by some salt dunes. Your throat feels sore. <laughs> the salt is literally pulling water out of your body. That's actually a real process, by the way. It's, um, it's, uh, 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 osmosis. There we go. It's the process when you have, like, electrolytes or a, some sort of dissolved mineral in one liquid and it's not in another, that the particles will naturally diffuse across. It also happens in gas, right? If you have uh, a particulate in a certain gaseous space, that will diffuse across and eventually become evenly distributed between the two, uh, like, gases or fluids, right? It's uh, one of the reasons that your body can get really screwed up if you drink too much water or even consume too many electrolytes, right? Too much salt. Um, we're talking pounds of salt and gallons of electrolytes. Uh, and that's because it will literally start to pull the minerals out of your body um, and, you know, your body depends on those things, those electrolytes, to do things like run your heart or send signals to your muscles. So you'll actually start to experience, like, muscle spasms or heart palpitations as your body loses, doesn't have enough minerals to sort of run those operations. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to experience that for yourself. I'm not joking when I say this game has one of the steepest difficulty curves and one fatal mistake could end your entire playthrough. Or, you know, just hit alt -F. Is this your card? No. <laughs> what? Four and, uh... Wait, what are his games? Titanfall 2, Risk of Rain 2, An Image of Jocko, NordVPN Shortcut, Sands of Salazar, 
Light Magic, Pharaoh Gold. Are these all the desktop, Rick, Shortcut, Tree Size, Free, Bonsai Buddy, Guild Wars. Interesting. Normie stuff. I love how he has normie stuff. I just love, I feel like people's desktops are like an insight into their, their world. Never tell anyone. Let me tell you about mechanics. Firstly, overlay UI. Turn it on. I have no idea why it's not the default, but it's virtually unplayable without it. There's a lot of interesting monster designs in this game. Interesting in their design to creatively reduce your life expectancy. Most common cause of death, a brick wall. Because for some reason, mimics are level 25 and still generate where they shouldn't. That's good programming. Just like choosing Unity to be the basis of your sandbox roguelike. How about rusty saw blade that dismembers on every hit. I hope you have an extra head, because otherwise it's game over. On the bright side, equipping your severed face as a homemade facial accessory is both fashionable and attractive. <laughs> I love how that's actually true. Do you like bananas? How about being peeled like a banana? Because for about half, what? half the banana trees in this game, the fruit comes to them. This may surprise newer players as pressing auto explore in the banana grove is a guaranteed single click shortcut to being disemboweled. Have you- Wow, okay. The bananas are weapons. Who are you to get a good source of potassium? For too long, bananas have been eaten by people. It's time for them to strike back. They've bided their time long enough. They will exact their revenge for thousands of years of bananas being eaten. God help them. Have you ever wondered about the struggle of living with dyslexia? If so, encounter a psychic master and his slaves, and you won't have to wonder anymore. And why not say, fuck it, let's add a giant magnet to the game. Because stripping you of your dignity is no longer enough. We're going to forcibly strip you of your items as well. And considering most people have auto pickup turned on by default, watch as your character is forced into an infinite dance of losing items, picking them up, only to lose them again until you starve to death or smash escape fast enough to turn it off you know the gr <laughs> i just i just love that i just love that that is like the quintessential like troll trap All right this is uh, low concept high execution traps are so cool and by cool i mean kind of messed up right uh but you know like in the vietnam war right the nva masters of the booby trap and some of their best ones were just like really low concept right there would be like two rollers but the rollers would have little spikes on them so as you stepped on it with your foot your foot would fall into the rollers and be stabbed repeatedly with the spikes um Again, this was uh, something that would probably cause permanent injury to the soldier on patrol who was dumb enough to step in it. And, again, we're talking about an extremely crude trap. It's a hole in the ground with some wooden sticks in it. So the fact that that was able to counter, you have to think, the U.S., who spent, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars training a soldier, flying them across the world, putting them on patrol with a rifle, and then a, you know an hour and a half of a North Vietnamese army soldier's time to build a little trap that does this was enough to send them on a plane back home. Pretty high concept, interesting execution, but kind of a war crime, right? Because remember, if you build that trap, you sort of hope a U.S. soldier steps in it, but a kid could also step in it. Great pyramids of Egypt? Imagine they could fly. Now, imagine you fused it with a Sherman T-34 Calliope and expanded the rocket tubes Calliope. To a hundred. Not too bad when you consider a rocket salvo is only ten, unless they get you up against a wall, in which case you get slammed repeatedly until they empty the entire rack. And then they fabricate- The chrome pyramid fabricates 20 weird artifacts from the substance of their and body. And replace each and every high explosive missile in a single turn. At this point, why not give it an automatic force field and the ability to randomly teleport across the map? Everything described as an enemy inside Caves of Quood. Is it a unique option? boss fight? No, it is a common occurrence in the Deathlands, known only as a chrome pyramid. And if you see your screen vibrating and glitching, it's a good time to leave. If that sounds overwhelming, let me assure you that's not the case. Because every creature in this game, from birds to trees, plants to ants, baboons to raccoons, everything belongs to a specific faction, and their relation to you is dependent on your reputation with a group. If you're hate- What? 
I mean, these games, like, I can't tell if he is just exaggerating the complexity for comedic effect or if there really is this subset of extremely graphically simple games which are just infinitely complex like by design you know again it's and maybe this is something where i just don't appreciate the fact that this is an entire subset of the gaming world um that my only exposure to it is games like tarkov where the the graphics are pretty good the core playable playability is something that's like accessible to me as like an fps but there is zero play guide zero like tutorial zero sort of scale up in the mission and that you are just thrown into it expected to learn by dying which i think is on one hand uh a sign of the fact that like modern adult gamers want these experiences right they want to have to like stretch their brain and push themselves um but i think it's also you know emblematic of the fact that it feels like bifurcated right like there's the ultra accessible game you know the cs goes of the world where you can literally like sort of guess your way through the interface and still be playing in a match immediately right single player games like red dead where there's a really expansive tutorial that really holds your hand through things and then you have games like this which are just meant to be brutal unforgiving challenging learning processes where every victory is feels like a, a true hard-earned victory even the peaceful ones will try to rip you apart. If you're loved, even the most aggressive members will protect you as one of their own. This applies to others as well. Chimps eat the fuck out of monkeys. And the relation between fact. Thank you for that insight, Joe Rogan, who is apparently now giving out medical advice to NFL quarterbacks as one does. Controls their behavior. Let's yeah, this is... <sighs> okay, so one of the things that I think is worth warning and this has nothing to do with the game, but I just got to put it out there. We have this idea in our heads that if you're an, like an NFL quarterback or like a celebrity or something, that you have access to secret knowledge that other people don't. That's almost certainly not the case. They are as dumb as you in every facet of their lives, except perhaps for one area in which they were both extremely lucky and maybe could also be an expert. Sort of like having your PhD in being a rich person who sells uh, makeup, right? Sure, if I was an influencer who sold makeup, I would want to hear what the Kylie Jenners of the world have to say, right? But even me, even another person who's a content creator, I look at someone like Kylie Jenner, she has a different audience, she sells, she monetizes totally differently, and Frankly, she doesn't have a lot of her own agency in these things, right? It's 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 the brands she associates with. It's her good publicity people, right? She she may not have that same sense. Even her mom, right, was the initial person sort of guiding her career through its steps. So I don't know how much insight she even has to her own success, right? So why would you listen to her for anything? Just like, why would you listen to, I would, I love hearing what Joe Rogan had, has to say on the rare occasion he did it, uh, about the nature of the comedy business, because that's pretty fascinating, right? And the nature of like the business of mixed martial arts. But Joe Rogan himself is, is not a mixed martial artist. So like in terms of like technique and stuff, the last time he hit somebody was as a Taekwondo competition, which for those of you keeping score at home is a point sparring competition. And like, that's it. He's he has not fought in a cage. He's never, as far as I can tell, never even competed in the sport of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, which he holds a black belt. So why he the amount of times he's giving like advice and guidance and insight to people who are like actual high level athletes and they're listening to him is preposterous to me. And the fact that athletes can't distinguish a commentator and comedian from an actual like trainer is absolutely mind boggling to me. It just goes to show you where if you have, if you're famous enough, people just assume you're a genius. 
None of this has anything to do with the game. Sorry, let's get back into it. Say you wear a beaded bracelet. This tricks baboons into thinking you're one of their own. That doesn't mean they're not aggressive. That just means they're not aggressive to you. They hunt. They hunt monkeys. They corral them in. It's the most ruthless shit because there's a video of this chimp eating a monkey while it's alive. No. It's holding on to the monkey and biting its hips and just pulling chunks of meat while the monkey's screaming like, ah! So how do you influence reputation? Reputation isn't affected by helping or killing normal people. Only celebrities. Much like real life, if you kill a lot of short people, they won't rise up against you. But if you kill a famous Minecraft YouTuber... <laughs> Mandalore Gaming official height, 3 foot 11. Nice the size of a small child, they'll start to notice. Every faction randomly generates legendary characters, and interacting, bonding, or straight up murdering them will influence your reputation, depending on that character's personal history. For example, this is a legendary baboon queen. She is... I love how this is... Loved by baboons, disliked by robots for digging up the remains of their ancestors, hated by the villagers of Alava for stealing a cherished heirloom, disliked by the villagers of Alamor for selling a map of their vaults to adventurers. Naturally loved by her people. However, she accidentally dug up some robot's dead grandfather, probably a TI-84 calculator. She also sold confidential banking details from one village and stole some shit from another. Quite understandably, these factions don't like her, and smacking her dead with a a heavy branch would probably make a lot of people, excluding those that use shit as a projectile, incredibly huh. happy. Now, the most precious resource in Quod is water. Very well, I mean, that's sort of interesting because that's, in a lot of ways, how real sort of politics types work. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Um, though it doesn't always intrinsically... Like, the, the village won't necessarily like you because you killed their enemy. They'll appreciate you for doing so, but they don't owe you anything, right? If you can't do something for the village now, they're not going to just treat you more kindly out of the goodness of their heart. Now, if you kill one enemy and you go to the village and you say, I will kill your other enemies and you know I'm potent enough to do so because I've killed the baboon queen, then, then you have a negotiating position. But doing something, doing a good deed for free is just, is a sucker's game, right? Get paid for something. If someone else wants it done and you're going to do it anyway, you want to make sure you get compensated for it. There's not much of it around, so the act of sharing your water is one of the most culturally significant actions you can take. Your first is mine, my water is yours. Performing a water ritual will bond you together and strengthen relations. The factions that like them will like you even more, but the factions that don't will dislike you by association. However, sharing water with another, only later to betray your brother, is the worst crime you can possibly commit, and even the <coughs> enemy of thy enemy will regret Guard you, the Kinslayer, with open hatred. Wow. Interesting. I mean, that that is actually an illustration of another real principle of, like, the reason cultures all over the world get fixated on honor is because honor is a really, really, really good way to ensure interactions are, tr are trustable, right, in the absence of, like, a central government that can do contract enforcement, right? Apple doesn't trust Google, but it trusts that if Google signs a contract, the government will step in and force them to adhere to the conditions of it or pay out the nose, right? But when you don't have that in, a society, like, simple agrarian societies, right, you have to rely on this system of honor and shame. And so there's certain agreements... Uh, like, for example, in Afghanistan, you had Pashtun Wali, right? Which, among other things, said that if you had a guest arrive to your village or to your house or uh, who was in need of assistance, you, as a matter of honor, had to take them in, protect them, and ensure their, their safety, right? Uh, and, you know, that is, is seen as extremely sacred, right? We would routinely have to, I mean, not have to follow Pashtun Wali. We chose to follow Pashtun Wali. Um, meeting with people we thought, like officials that we knew were corrupt, right? But if they come to our base, right, we would not arrest them because to do so would violate 
Pashtun Wali. Even though everyone knew we were on opposite sides, if we were to arrest this person in violation of the code of the honor, right, the exact result would be what's shown here, As right, where you have this, let's see, I'm going to just pull this up, right, where you, mm, there we go. The exact reputation of what you have here, where you go, your reputation with everyone just plummets, and that's because you are seen as a dishonorable person. Okay, let's kick back into it. Will every faction in the game? Of course, you can always use a Schrodinger's page. Remember, it's not considered historical revision when you're doing it with quantum entanglement. As briefly mentioned, water is the most valuable commodity. That's why we don't have currency. Water is currency. We don't go by greenback or gold. We go by water. And we trade it by the dram. One dram of water is approximately one-eighth of a fluid ounce, or about 3.6 ml. It is the smallest unit of trade, and a water Water skin can hold up to 64 drams of fluid, 8 fluid ounces, or about 230 ml. In Caves of Quid, we drink our currency. In this world... That's one of the things that's actually pretty interesting, is that in some ways, right, having... There's some traits that currencies need to have. And one of the key ones is that they can't really degrade, right? You want to have a currency to be effective. It has to be easy to store. Right. So this is why something like a food product is a terrible currency, even in places like prison. Right. What's the currency in prison? Cigarettes. Right. Well, why is it? Well, one, it's easy to transport and store. It doesn't require right special equipment to hold it. Right. You can just they're, they're cigarettes. You can just put them wherever, honestly, uh, to a worrying degree. Um, and they're small enough that you can make subtle small transactions with them so you know you don't have to be a fraction you know you don't need to be like own half a cigarette right you can own you know just like we have down to the cent um but we don't care about fractions of a cent right when something is 399 and you take six percent of that it's it's not it's not two decimal places it's like 15 decimal places but we just round it off to the nearest cent and that's a pretty good transaction that's a pretty good level of fineness for the transaction so like a terrible currency would be uh would be water by the gallon in this world right so it's hard to store because water evaporates all the time it's heavy it's massive it has a lot of volume and if you have say it's easy to leak and spill it's easy to evaporate um, it's just not a good currency right there's lots of things in our world that is that are valuable right that we use routinely but we don't use them as currency because they don't have those other traits Poverty isn't begging on the streets. Poverty is dying of thirst. And so you need water to live or trade, meaning your currency is actually damn heavy and there's only so many water skins you can carry around. It's an interesting system, effectively forcing you to trade valuables for other valuables and measure out water to even out the difference. But to even earn your water, you're going to have to go into the great unknown. Explore, plunder, and pillage your way across the world and hopefully you can come back alive. It's going to be dangerous but when the alternative is certain death, I think I'll take my options. Survival yeah. is not easy, but the game offers you a diverse variety of skills to help you stay alive. Each time you level up, you get skill points, which can be freely distributed to suit your character. Finding combinations that work is a matter of experimentation. For example, I once made a mutant with six arms, with an axe in each hand. Axes specialize in dismemberment, and dual welding specializes in attacking simultaneously with each arm. Each each turn, my abomination took off up to six limbs, including the head. And believe me, everything eventually runs out of limbs. On <laughs> that, that is a tactical strategy right there. That That is actually a really high level tactical sort of thinking. Obviously came to it the hard way, probably through iteration after iteration. Top of that, you'll run into items you don't understand. These will be described as an artifact and require successful identification to properly use. For example, if your character is a complete dumbass, he has no concept of a folding chair. Instead, he'll see it as a collection of strange tubes. Also, don't do this huh. with stuff you don't own, because in the process of delicately smashing it to pieces, you might unintentionally break it. 
and the excuse of, sorry, I was just identifying, doesn't work when you're being violently murdered by a pack of villagers. Art <laughs> yeah, this is one of the things actually that Tarkov doesn't really get right, is that it assumes your character has this incredibly intimate knowledge of weapon and weapon parts, and that within moments you can identify the exact part, the weapon it goes to, etc, etc. Which I understand, if you're a veteran player of the game, then like, yeah, you you yourself can look at an item and be like, oh, that's a B10 rail for uh, an AK-74. Um, but again, for most regular people, there's going to be a learning curve. And some things you will pick up, hold, see, but not understand what they do. Or in other cases, you may think it's one item, but really it's another. You know, we've all had that happen to us. Effects are amazing. See also Amazon, how often do you order a part for something on Amazon and you get there and it, it doesn't charge your phone, it charges the phone that you had two generations ago, or you think you've ordered a spatula, but you've really ordered a rice spatula that's like the size of a spoon. Yeah, we, we, this is like the Amazon problem. Amazing and offer you great flexibility, often augmenting or replacing abilities you don't have with their mechanized technological equivalent. These include, but are not limited to, instant teleportation to any XYZ coordinate, biodynamic fuel cells powered by blood, handheld nuclear grenades, or even a Ooh. pair of rocket skates designed for their intended purpose to burn down every forest in the game. Not only <laughs> can you use them, but with a tinkering skill, you can also craft them, and provided you've got the appropriate blueprints, you can not only craft them, but also modify them to your heart's content. And for the longest time, that seemed like the limits of this game, until I went further beyond and discovered cooking. Imagine living in a world where the difference between life and death is decided almost entirely by what you had for breakfast that day, because that's what, that's what cooking is to Caves of Quood, when everything is so mutated, even consuming the mutant will give you their properties, and adding more mutants to the dish will increase the possibilities of your ridiculous combination. For you are what you eat is the sacred mechanic of this game. Okay, you literally are what you eat. By the way, that's not how real eating works. Your body breaks it down into its core amino acids and proteins, and then processes it. And there's a couple of exceptions of things that don't get broken down first, like water. Water will pass right through your stomach into your digestive tract. But rest assured, um, you are what you eat is not true, only with a few exceptions. Water, uh, radiation, radioactive things. If you eat radioactive things, you will become radioactive. Other than that, unfortunately, you are not. You, you cannot become stronger by eating a chad. For example, I can engineer a chance to heal to full health on any tick of damage. Then I pour acid on my feet and become immortal. Or I can use a mental mutation to spawn a huge number of plants that explode when you step on them, eat a gecko that gives me complete immunity to fire, and intentionally cause a chain reaction that turns the entire map into lava while leaving myself untouched. Or I could ask a gigantic sewer slug for his favorite soup recipe, drink it, and turn myself permanently into a gigantic sewer slug that stores, pressurizes, and spits entire rivers of acid. With all that <laughs> knowledge, the This is... This is just ridiculous. This has got to be somebody who's just like troll game. The only thing left is to go deeper. Many people go into caves and they don't come back. Usually they have stupid names like Nutty Putty Cave. A man actually died there. Yeah, actually, if you want to um, have some real life horror reading, you should look up the guy who died in Nutty Putty Cave. It's horrible. It is the number one worst way I, I would ever want to go out. I literally will never go into a cave where I cannot see the entrance and cannot easily turn around because I've read the story of the man who died in Nutty Putty Cave. Seriously. There's a mother out there that had to explain to her kids, yeah, your your father unfortunately passed away in a Nutty Putty Cave. Do you want that to be you? But I digress, because everything I've told you up until now has been the surface of Quud. What does that mean? The other horrible way to die that you should not look up, scuba diving especially cave divers and very, very deep water divers. Um, those people are true mad lads. Uh, 
even the good ones, man, it's just like a matter of time before something horrible happens. Uh, this isn't to say recreational divers, right? The things you can do at your dive shop are cool. They're so much fun. They're totally safe, right? You just follow a couple of safety protocols and you can dive your whole career. But it's when you start playing with fire where you go deep into caves, you go past 130 feet, feet, feet um, of depth, or you start diving like like mixed gases and crazy rigs. Um, that's where the level of danger starts to skyrocket. It means I've played long enough to see the game for what it really is. A series of challenges that appear impossible until you realize every problem has a solution. And once the puzzle pieces click together, you'll reach that epiphany that the entire system is, by design, designed to be subverted. The sandbox wants you to break it. It wants you to achieve your goal in the most creative way possible. Let me tell you about the real caves of quud. For a start, we need a lot of money. We don't have time to earn it, so we're going to print it. Welcome to the lava economy, because lava <laughs> is extremely valuable. One dram equals 16 drams of water. Okay, mm. great. However, we can only store it safely inside a one dram glass file. A water skin holds 64, but starts burning the moment you put it in. Previously, I could extinguish the fire caused by the lava by pouring water on it, and leaving the water skin perfectly intact for me to sell. The developers patched this out and reduced the value of lava twice, but that didn't stop me. Instead, I streamlined the process. Normally, fungal colonies produce lava, which is a good source of early money and parasitic infections, but their capacity is limited. We need industrial quantities. You need to find and identify a thermal grenade and a freeze grenade. Any generation works, but a Mark III is preferable. Next, we need bananas. Th I, I, this is insane. This is complete madness. Either six day stilt or banana grove. Preserve it into sun dried bananas. Cook it. Gain psychometry. Use psychometry to read the early history of every artifact in your inventory without paying for a data disc ever again. Get tinkering to level one so you can disassemble scrap and craft grenades. Go to the desert canyon. Locate a nice pocket of shale rock. Quick trivia. What's the melting point of shale rock? About a thousand degrees. Chuck thermal grenades in quick succession until it melts. Congratulations! We've just made lava. Fill as many water skins as you can hold and throw them far away. Now refrigerate them. Congratulations! You have now freeze-dried your lava. Head back to town and buy whatever you want. With the Federal Reserve forever printing lava, we don't have to worry about money anymore. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, right? These sort of games in, in Caves of Cud, they apply in the real world. Right. Like the real world has these gamified solutions that let you, you know, they're not always money printers, but like and they're not always personal, but at an industrial scale, this is like the core of civilization. Right. Like imagine the earliest human beings, right, who would have to go out, forage for food, bring it back. Right. And it's like sometimes you had a good day, sometimes you had a bad day, sometimes you were successfully hunted, sometimes you didn't. Now, imagine you live that lifestyle and then someone sits down and is like, no, 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 you can hack the system. You can break the game. And they go, no, you can't. They go, no, watch this. You take a seed from the plant, then you put it right next to your village and you just leave it there. Right. And maybe you put a little water on it and boom, it shows up. The foraging is right next to your village. And they're just like, this is nonsense. This, they, they, no way. You're supposed to go out and gather it. They're like, no, it works. I swear. I right? imagine the first person who is just like, you don't have to chase the zebra to eat them. You're just like, yes, you do. They're like, no, you just find this, this like goat looking thing. Right. And you just trick it into, into being in your village and you just put up like some, some wood planks around it. So it can't leave. And then when you hunt it, you don't even need to chase it. You just walk around and hit it with a rock. And people would be like, you broke the game, dude. This is hacking. And they're like, no, this is how it works, right? This is how all of this goes, right? Um, you look at almost everything, and it sort of has that appearance to it, right? This idea that someone has, like, circumvented what are supposed to be the rules of the game, right? And created these systems that enable them to, like, succeed beyond the scale that people realize.
Next, we need to metagame harder. Liquids are important to this game. Liquids are vital. Liquids also mix together and get tainted in the process. Would you like it if a woman stepped in your bowl of cereal? Don't answer that. At the Six Days Tilt, there's a merchant of interest. He sells liquids, sometimes exceptionally rare liquids. He's going to be the catalyst to our success. But there's one problem. He's only one man. We need more. Have a look at my game. Now, let's read the names together. Icker Merchant. Clone of an Icker Merchant. Icor. It's Icor. Icor is a term for the like, I think it's the soupy stuff inside of bugs, like the bug version of blood, I think. Clone of a clone of an Icar merchant. You get the idea. We're going to buy his cloning solution, pour it on his body, and watch him multiply. And then we're going to buy cloning solution from his clones to multiply them as well. Why? So we can buy more cloning solution to duplicate any merchant we desire. It takes some time. But first, you have to plant <laughs> your crops before you can enjoy the harvest. Now, we're going to buy our way to immortality. How? By purchasing every file of neutron flux. And then, you're going to cook some gravity. Neutron flux gives you a permanent plus one to your armor value with a one in four chance of gravitational collapse. Seth, I don't like those odds. Neither do I. Take a sphinx salt injector, stab it into your arm, start cooking. If your body collapses under the weight of a neutron star, go back. Because that never really happened. Because precognition is a vision of the future, not the present. And if you don't like that theoretical timeline, you go back to a divergent point in time when you first injected that cocktail. Walk around, live life, and try again. When the deterministic dice role of RNG. I'm not telling you this for fun. RNG is literally deterministic. RNG is seeded. Just walk around to regenerate the seed. This is meta. This is like some conspiracy theory level stuff. This is the time cube, by the way. He'll be at Stanford in no time being like, time cube, it's the time cube. Will give you the outcome you desire. Yes, this game has saves coming built into the mechanics. Reach immortality. Keep eating bananas. The potassium is good for you and good for your newfound ability to craft nearly every item in the game. Next, the one and only reason I play Trukin is to pacify the Templars. Unique Templars carry a very special cocktail. Unfortunately, they're extremely trigger happy and they have a tendency to inject it upon any sign of conflict. As a Trukin, I simply walk up to them and buy it for a pathetic sum of money. What is it? It's an injector filled with Eater Nectar. Injecting it gives you a permanent plus one to a random attribute, but that's not good enough. We're going to preserve it and condense the nectar, and then we're going to use precognition and cook it, which gives us a one in four chance of getting plus one in all of our attributes permanently. However, these are quite rare, and I can't know if I'll ever find another. So first, I find a high-level merchant, clone them repeatedly, and buy metamorphic polygel. This is cloning solution for items. So <laughs> this is all, I mean, I, this to me is actually, maybe he's found a really, maybe the most fun game mechanic I've ever seen. Just pure meta game dirtbaggery. Um, again, if you want to know the most real world application, it's this, right? To look at the world that you live in and find the metagame. Um, this is this is actually if you if you've seen the Wall Street bet stuff, um, there was a guy who did exactly this to get infinite leverage, uh, and then promptly blew all of his money. Um, but the real world version uh, is actually not in this, right? It's one. It's about investing in ETFs because basically they're a Ponzi scheme, and everyone else invests in the S and P 500, which means if you do it right, you just have to make sure you get out before everyone else does. But because they're in pension funds and retirement accounts, you almost will never have anyone really get out of it until there aren't young workers anymore, right? So you've got you know a generation to grow your money. Uh, this is this is how a lot of these high finance schemes work, right? They're they're not really like uh, they're not really like good fundamental economics. They're just breaking the meta game. Um, look at short selling, right? Where you sort of hype a stock, right? Take out a short position, then use media rumors and leaks to force the price down, giving you a profit, right? And you just can cycle that again and again and again and again. That's a lot of negative news. Not a lot, but that's a significant portion of negative news about companies. So now I can theoretically scale my character to an infinite amount of armor, infinite amount of attributes, and once I clone all the bookstores, an infinite amount of Schrodinger's pages that I can use to gain an infinite amount of reputation. And 
still, I get one shot by a fucking rusty saw. Remember <laughs> that chrome pyramid I talked about? Previously, nobody actually knew how to deal with these until one insane madman EMP'd the force field, charged the chrome pyramid, and, with a small flick of a blade, disarmed it. Yes, he ripped off the entire swarm rack. That same swarm rack can be picked up and used. However, the average player can only hold a weight of about 300. This thing mm. weighs 1,500. So we modify it, reducing its total weight down to zero. But at this point, weight doesn't really matter. With the exact same method, I disarmed every other robot in the Deathlands and used them to craft spheres of negative weight, allowing us to effectively roleplay as a high-speed missile launcher. But even ah. that was still not enough. I was tired of paying for goods, so I stabbed a merchant with a love injector and robbed him blind. Then I stabbed a legendary bear, so we could improve human race relations by sharing honey and the location of local beehives. I also stabbed the Pope, made him follow me ah. back to town, and watched as he started a race riot, because his reputation with the unwashed masses was not very high. <laughs> I love how this is a populate uh, a populist riot. Instead, I wanted companions that don't murder everyone. So I sprayed sentience on a block of concrete and convinced the block of animated concrete to follow me into combat. I found out concrete is not only indestructible, it can also hold weaponry in its hands. Unfortunately, my companion died when I foolishly tried to slam through concrete using concrete. I broke a concrete wall. I lost a concrete friend. But none of them... <laughs> Nice. What I said even holds a candle compared to being a high-level esper. Here's some examples of what you can do. Surround yourself. Okay, I'm just gonna point this out. Steven Seagal, the person depicted there, is 100% a fraud. Um, all of those Aikido moves don't apply. Every one of those people are trained to like fly through the air as though they've been thrown really hard. And this is obviously true because no one who trains any Aikido has had even a tiny fraction of success in any sort of sportified version of fighting, right? So, and he's pretty well known as, as, be, as having lied about his credentials and his history. Um, so again, it looks as though he has hacked the system. Um, but once again, like all systems, there is actually ways to hack, uh, hack it. And you can see in uh, the UFC, right? That's how you get these sort of bizarre uh, fight outcomes, i.e. someone um, like, well, all of the wrestlers, really, uh, who figured out that you can actually just win MMA fights, you can win world titles by literally just taking people onto the ground, sitting on top of them, and punching them regularly. That's the Khabib method, uh, you, that you can game it out by being like, I'm going to deliberately not learn how to strike. Uh, another fighter named Damian Maia did the same thing, it was just like, I'm not going to learn how to strike at all, because that's a waste of time. I'm going to learn enough about striking so that people like have to worry one percent about being punched by me just enough that they have to block my punches and then i'm just going to take them on down onto the ground and then smush them and choke them right because of that is the only thing i'm good at and it worked he got like three title shots Self with a permanent force field. Use instant transmission. Turn walls into lava. Turn brains into liquid using your mind from the other side of the map with clairvoyance. Dominate every merchant to give you their life savings. Dominate a domesticated pig. Put a nuclear warhead in its mouth and turn it into a remote controlled suicide bomber. Split yourself into seven identical copies with identical powers and turn the screen into a living nightmare. Use <laughs> ego projection. Project your HP so high, it doesn't even render in the UI. Die anyway. Reverse the outcome with precognition. Follow one of the billion divergent timelines instead. Tap the mass mind. Pluck sentience from the universe. Reset your cooldowns <laughs> and do it all over again. Wow, extract sentience from the universe. That's what's up. As you can probably tell, it was so damn powerful that the developers had to code in their own countermeasures. Now, the more powerful you are, the more others start to notice. Your psychic glimmer increases, and other espers will come to take your mind for their own. The attacks become so brutal, the burden of power so great, that you might even be tempted in your moment of weakness to eat a fuck ton of humble pies. Because in this game, the bakeries are owned by Nietzsche, and his pastries 
induce ego death, but the player will forever subvert the developer. Do you know how to end the pursuit? To stop the hunt? To escape? You have to accept first that there is no escape and allow yourself to be caught. And in the briefest of moments, you dominate your pursuer and kill yourself. Your old flesh is gone, but inside new flesh, your mind lives on. This game is truly exceptional, but it does. Wow. Wow. I love how breaking the metagame at some point reaches this point of like philosophical, like meditative quandaries. You know, this is like, this is like, maybe this is like what Jack Dorsey feels like, right? You found a company that's basically just hacking the metagame. It's so stupid. You're like, there's no way that this will work. But with a little bit of knowledge of human psychology, you're like, great. We let people just post messages to anyone that wants to hear them. And there are 120 characters long. And people are like, this will never work. And it works beautifully. He makes a boatload of money, despite the fact his company doesn't, because he metagames that to death and just sell upsells it from investor to investor until it goes public, where other sucker investors buy it he becomes incredibly rich he's broken the metagame entirely people hate him right for his nonsense platform that literally is as neutral as you can get right it's just 120 characters displayed on a screen to your friends but people think it's actually destroying the world but and it sort of is but mostly it's just people destroying the world through your dumb simple platform and then finally you're just like how do i deal with the fact that i'm so reviled the answer is to just get really into like buddhist meditation right and to cultivate this like mindful stillness that almost no one else uh, at a level that very few other people ever do and maybe that's maybe that's the real ultimate like metagame hack is to be like if i can just dominate my own feelings and my own perception of the world then i can like game out and metagame it's like the metagame for figuring out metagames have its problems. One, it's made on Unity. That's not immediately noticeable. But when a small cloud of gas accidentally falls down a pipe and has to generate 10 levels of dungeon for the sake of simulation, yeah, you're gonna notice. Two, sometimes an essential quest NPC contracts a fungal infection and is regrettably chopped to pieces. Sometimes the sandbox breaks and you lose your progress. The game practically expects you to use console commands to fix itself, so don't feel too bad about it. Three, most of the game is randomly generated, but you can tell immediately if a character is pre-written because the first tumblr fursona you meet will give you an option to ask about her neon purple hair and yeah. quirky way of talking i like the writing in this game but come on disliked by the water barons for her queer appearance really maybe she just looks like shit listen i can respect the fact that you can self-insert your oc girlfriend but at least give us the option of dismembering her and four <laughs> i want more that's a really specific critique or, there's not enough of this world, and you're spending too much of your time banning me off your Discord for making reasonable gameplay suggestions. Init <laughs> Actually, I dismiss this game as overly simplistic. I come back now to tell you how deep it goes. Even with a time given, I've only told you a fraction of what I know. It should be. This is truly madness. Be noted that the writing in this game is fantastic. There's so much lore, like how the banana ranchers in this game are plants themselves. It's plants enslaving plants. It's plantation owners beating other plantation owners. They just work up the hierarchy. It's like... <laughs> wow. That is weird. My slave name used to be Whipped Cream. Now I'm Whipping Cream. The music in this game is very charming and sets the tone that you're in a completely alien environment where nearly every rock, tree, and flower is very much alive. It's a beautiful, wonderful, and janky mess of a game. And <laughs> Despite being in early access, it's already given me hundreds of hours of enjoyment. As such, I give it a completely random, yet quantifiably high score, which can only be expressed on a graphical calculator. It's fantastic. It's not for everyone, and it's incredibly neurotic. But if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, give it a try. Yeah, this sounds like, for my highly regimented mind, this sounds like complete unsatisfying nonsense but i do love the game about breaking meta games i think if there's but if you're gonna break a meta game right do it in the real world man
do it in the real world. Figure out your own way to easily break the metagame obstacles. It requires a level of like vision and a level of understanding that's not easy to do, um, but it's really a great way to like look at challenges facing you. There's so many instances where with the right amount of effort, that's something that should be a tedious, boring, long, or annoying challenge can actually become expedited immensely if you're willing to put in the work where the work will give you the return much like this case right here's somebody who ultimately it's worth it to spend you know probably an hour cloning hundreds and hundreds of merchants because down the line it's saving you tens or dozens or hundreds of hours um, if you look at someone who really thinks this way uh devin nash is a sort of like a streamer guru but his sort of mindset of how do i create quality content in his case that's his specialty um but also like win the meta game that youtube wants you to play or that twitch wants you to play because right there's always the meta game they want you to do right the meta game of, of stream on twitch or whatever and then there's the winning the meta game right which is where you sort of either outflank the developers or give them what they want. So just ways to think about the world, I think. We negotiated a deal, however small, for about 10% off for the next couple of days on GOG. Follow the link and you save a single dollar. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. That content will consist of more than four pixels. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously mm. funding and bankrolling these videos. Except this one is completely free because I can't make you pay money for abstract text adventures. You're all truly wonderful take care and have a good one all hey, right hey people oh, Seth here. awesome guys this was just wild on so many levels so many levels um but thank you for joining me on this and thanks again to the channel members for requesting this again one if you liked the new format let me know if it sort of annoyed you or parts of it annoyed you let me know that as well i still got to figure out when i want to point things out on the screen how to freeze it um also, uh, if you want to become a channel member, right? Channel members get access to exclusive rooms on the Discord, priority access to join my party when I'm streaming multiplayer games. Um, they get to submit and vote on my Friday reaction video, and they have my gratitude for their support for the channel. Uh, if you want to do that, it's the join button right next to the subscribe button. Thanks again to all of them, and I will see you in the next one.